From FingerLakes1.com, this is Inside the FLX. I'm Josh Durso, and today we're talking with Chris Lejeski, director at the Montezuma Audubon Center in Savannah, Wayne County. Each month, we touch base with Chris to talk about what's happening at the center, ways the community is engaging with them, and to learn a little bit more about the environment and wildlife out there. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time today. First things first, let's talk about the fall bird migration. What are we seeing? We're still in the middle of the waterfowl migration here at Montezuma and incredible numbers of ducks, geese and swans continue to migrate southward out of the boreal forest of Canada and the Arctic tundra. Uh, Starting to see the first tundra swans arriving at Montezuma. Those are large white birds um with black bills sometimes they have a little bit of yellow on the bill as well and and they're going to be around uh until the the marshes start to freeze over which could be uh as early as december although if we stay mild and the marshes stay unfrozen then they're going to linger uh, as well as the other waterfowl um so great number of ducks uh, we have about two dozen species of ducks coming through the montezuma area right now And another interesting species that's coming through are the sandhill cranes. The uh, cranes are uh, a large, lanky, grayish, brownish bird. The the adults have a red forehead. And we saw just a couple weeks ago, 120 down in the Knox Marcellus Marsh. uh, That's down at the National Wildlife Refuge. They've been bouncing around between that marsh and the private agricultural fields in that area. Uh, So they like to go out and feed in the harvested corn and soybean fields. And on on occasion, they will go back to the marsh uh, to rest. So that's a great, great site and, and has brought a lot of people out to Montezuma recently. And then also we're seeing songbirds. Uh, These are Northern birds that, breed up in Canada and they come down and spend the winter with us. Species like dark-eyed junco, which is a chickadee-sized bird. I, I like to think of it as a um, a, a chocolate-colored bird that's dipped in uh, vanilla uh, chocolate. So dark and white on this bird. Uh, and that's here during the winter months. And we're also seeing the white-throated sparrows coming down in here. So a sparrow sized bird and mostly brown and streaks with some beige on it, but it also has a little bit of white on the throat. So whether you're interested in in waterfowl or songbirds, uh, bald eagles are quite plentiful. There's something for everyone to see right now at the Montezuma Wetlands Complex. Very cool. Uh, before we get into our uh, species spotlight for the for the month of November here, uh, first things first with foot traffic out at the center. How's that been over the last few weeks? Weather's been really nice, so I have to assume that you guys have been seeing a few more uh, folks out there. Strong visitation at Montezuma Audubon Center. And uh, just to remind your listeners, uh, we are on Route 89 up in Savannah, just a short 15 minute drive north of the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, we have 200 acres and two miles of trails. Those The weekend weather has been spectacular. And so we, we see dozens of people every weekend. Um, a lot of people coming out for our guided programs, but also just to venture out on their own and enjoy forest, wetlands, and grassland habitats. Uh, so I, I expect that even though we're turning a little bit cooler now, uh, that because we are in the migration season, the number of of visitors will continue to remain high and uh, they'll be coming in from all over the country as we have have seen over the last couple of months and obviously with that warmer the warmer start to november that we had uh remind folks how that might affect even just sort of week week and a half two week stretches of warmer than normal weather how that can affect uh, migration patterns and just sort of how Mm -hmm. uh, individual or seasonal that is now that we're we're starting to get some cold fronts pushing on into the Montezuma area in the Finger Lakes region, we're we're starting to get some colder temperatures, and and that's bringing down more of the waterfowl, more songbirds, and birds of prey. Prior to 
this time frame here this week, um, you know, we were generally very mild. It was 70s. I remember a couple of days we had 80 degrees. Uh, and so very few cold fronts were, were coming through over the course of uh, much of October and the first half of November here. So that kind of put a, a bit of a pause on the bird migration. The birds were still coming in, but it just wasn't as robust, wasn't as strong. Um, so now we're getting cold fronts here. More birds are going to be coming in. And uh, again, just uh, whether you're going down to the National Wildlife Refuge or you're exploring the New York State DEC properties up in Savannah or coming here to Montezuma Audubon Center, a um, lot of birds to be found. Species spotlight time. So what uh, what is the bird of focus this month? wanted to highlight the northern shoveler. This is one of those migratory duck species coming through the Montezuma wetlands complex right now. It's a large dabbling duck. The males are very noticeable. They have a dark green head with a large spatula-like bill, uh, brown on the sides, and the wings have green, white, and blue patches. It's really noticeable. The females of this species are more brown and drab overall, but they also have that large spatula-like bill that the males have. These birds typically nest up um, in the northern tier of Canada and the central plains of Canada off to the western mountain areas of Canada and even into the United States. Uh, but they nest in marshes and ponds, and, and they, they can be found uncommonly in the Great Lakes area during breeding season. They're more likely to be found up in Canada. Uh, they mostly eat seeds and aquatic plants. Sometimes they'll go after mollusks and crustaceans or even small fish uh, because of, of that large bill. Great for, for catching a variety of food. Uh, but as I said, they, they are migrating through right now, heading southward. They're going to be going down to the southern tier of this country. Uh, so the southeast United States, everywhere from, from the coastal Carolina areas down along the Gulf Coast and then even towards uh, coastal Texas area for the winter months. And some autumn birding hikes, obviously, weather's been awesome. So I have to imagine that those were uh, a raging success. This has been a great partnership between Montezuma Audubon Center and New York State Canal Corporation. We're now into our second full season of these guided on the canals excursions. We started off back in 2021 with guided kayaking tours. And then we transitioned into the fall hikes and snowshoeing uh, earlier this year. Well, the Canal Corporation was so impressed with the amount of interest uh, in these Montezuma excursions that they uh, wanted to partner with us once again. So we're proud of that partnership. And um, we had a great summer season uh, this year. We had nearly a thousand people come out for our guided kayaking tours. And this fall with the, the birding hikes, uh, all of our guided hikes have filled up. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't announced today that we have any openings, uh, but these have been very popular. We've seen people from all over New York State and even beyond, uh, even as far away as Ohio and Pennsylvania, people are coming up to enjoy this uh, th these free excursions. Um, and then, so looking ahead to the, the winter season, we are going to offer free snowshoeing excursions at Montezuma Audubon Center. Again, this is in partnership with New York State Canal Corporation. People don't have to have their own snowshoes. We have plenty available to loan out for free. We've got children's sizes, some small adult sizes and larger adult sizes. And typically we have a, a foot to two feet of snow on the ground in Savannah. Uh, it's a great way to, uh, snowshoeing is a great way to explore this winter wonderland, to see the winter birds at Montezuma, as well as read the mammal tracks that are in the snow. So uh, folks should be on the lookout uh, on our website, montezuma.audubon.org. As we go uh, closer to the winter months, we're gonna be advertising those programs, get those registration pages uh, up and active so people can register online. Very cool. And those have to be a pretty good opportunity to sort of see a good spread of or variety of species uh, in a relatively short amount of time, right? 
We go for about a, a mile or so uh, through forest grasslands and next to our wetland habitats. So because of that, you're right, Josh, we see a variety of species, not only birds, but other other wildlife, mammals included. Um, and so uh, we've been regularly seeing bald eagles because they nest right on the property. And uh, while they're not breeding yet, they are uh, paired up right now with their mates. And uh, so we see them sitting in trees together, soaring overhead together. We have owls on the property. So uh, those earlier morning excursions, uh, the 10 o'clock excursion, there's always a chance to hear the hooting of the great horned owl or barred owl or eastern screech owl. And we'll have a lot of songbirds coming into the Montezuma area as we go into the winter months. So there's going to be a lot to explore this winter. So cool. Uh, so Audubon's National Wildlife Refuge report, it's out. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us some snippets or, or some major takeaways here from this thing? Yeah, th this uh, Audubon Refuge report was uh, created recently, and um, we did this for 525 uh, National Wildlife Refuges with recommendations for the refuge staff on, on how they can help prepare birds and their habitats for the upcoming changes due to climate change. Um, and so climate change is happening. We're seeing changes in the birds' ranges right now. Uh, birds are uh, expanding northward. Um, they're also expanding upward in elevation in, in the mountainous areas. So birds are telling us that that change is happening. And um, and so these you know, environmental conditions uh, as they change can impact negatively impact a bird's ability to survive. So specifically for Montezuma, we have found that based on Audubon's climate modeling by 2050, we could see a seven degree Fahrenheit increase in our average temperature. That is extremely significant. Um, and, and that could be detrimental to many of our bird species. We're also anticipating an annual increase in precipitation by about 1.3 inches. Now that, that sounds okay, given the amount of wetlands we have, but because it's gonna be so much warmer we anticipate that there could be a, a decrease by 44% of available moisture, which could alter the, the plants, the native plants that have been thriving in our, our forests and our wetlands and grassland habitats. So to you know, basically to summarize uh, the conclusion for Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge, we found that 22% of the 169 bird species that were modeled uh, are vulnerable to climate change across the season. So possibly we may lose the red-breasted merganser. The sandhill crane may no longer be with us. Bobolink, cerulean warbler, other songbird species of our forests. Uh, but if we take action now, we can improve the chances of hundreds of, of bird species to survive this. And really we're, we're asking folks and, and government agencies across the world to stabilize carbon emissions, uh, holding the warming to 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels. That would prevent the worst of uh, the changing climate and the, the negative impact that it would have on, on birds and other wildlife. In the, I'm curious when you get a report like this, uh, or you see a report like this, um, it it must be a little startling, I guess, to to the folks who are working uh, in this space every day, mm. uh, knowing that in such a short window, um, some pretty significant changes could happen and really kind of uproot everything that that you folks have worked so hard to maintain out there. That's right. This is alarming. Uh, birds are telling us that we need to act. Um, we have already seen in other reports that we have lost 3 billion birds since the 1970s, uh, largely due to habitat loss, um, pollution, pesticide use, climate change. Uh, so we need to listen to these birds. You know, we have data going back 
to at least the 1970s and some of our community science projects like the Christmas bird count go back to 1900. So we've got data that uh, is showing us that birds are declining in some areas and we need to do more. And in terms of climate change, we need to reduce the amount of carbon going up into the atmosphere. That can be done on a, a very local scale. People can take actions uh, reducing the amount of carbon they're producing. Uh, but we also need to take a national approach, a statewide approach, uh, and really a, a hemispheric approach to this carbon challenge. And of course, uh, Clean Water Act turns 50 in 2022. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about what that means for birds all these years later on sort of the riding the coattails of that conversation that we just had. Um, where does that stand five decades later? Yeah, just a few weeks ago, oh, we celebrated the 50th uh, birthday of the Clean Water Act. And, and for half a century, uh, this act has helped protect America's waters. Now, out of the, the you know the three billion birds that we've lost since the 1970s, there there was a a glimmer of hope from the latest State of the Birds report that came out, and that is with our waterfowl. We've actually seen a slight increase in the in the number of ducks, geese, and swans. And in large part, that has happened because of the Clean Water Act. So it's hard to overstate just how critical this legislation is in reducing the amount of pollution that's flowing into our rivers and lakes, uh, streams and wetlands. And, and here at Audubon, uh, at Montezuma Audubon Center, we know that birds and communities need access to clean water. Uh, people need access to clean water. And, and that's why this bipartisan legislation is so critical to ensuring the clean and abundant water in our rivers, lakes and streams um, remains intact and it's it's paramount to bird survival. So we, we've been part of this coalition that is supporting the Clean Water Act courts uh, at the at the federal level and and uh, legislators at the federal level have on occasion uh, taken shots at the Clean Water Act, but uh, fortunately the strong coalition still exists and Audubon continues to be a champion for the Clean Water Act because it is providing the clean water for birds and people as well. So we're asking folks to join the Audubon flock. And uh, if they want to learn more about what they can do uh, to support the Clean Water Act or protect birds and other wildlife and, and the places that they need in order to survive, we encourage people to visit our website, montezuma.audubon.org, and they can click on Stay Informed. And that's where they can enter uh, their email address and get occasional emails and updates and news uh, and event notices from Montezuma Audubon Center um, and, and learn how they can help birds and the places that they need for today and tomorrow. For sure. Uh, and speaking of uh, champions, local champions here, uh, Montezuma Audubon Center uh, in Savannah, your fundraising campaign it will kick off here uh, and the last couple months of the year sort of spent prepping for the following year. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about the importance of that and how those dollars are so valuable and all the programming that you guys offer throughout the calendar year. Well, as 2022 is coming to an end, we want to you know, celebrate our successes, celebrate the people that have supported our efforts uh, over the past year. And um you know, among the many successes that we had varies from the On the Canals uh, programming that we've done um, to the guided tours that we've led to the habitat that's been restored. Uh, one of our, our most successful programs and projects uh, from the coming year, from this past year was the launch of Montezuma Audubon Center's Youth Leadership Program. This incorporates fresh voices and perspectives into our work and it's empowering young uh, conservation leaders to build a better world for our birds and people in our communities as well. Uh, so th the people that we are reaching out to and engaging and bringing into the Audubon flock are middle school students, high school and college students. We've always done a lot of work with elementary school children, always done a lot of field trips. We generally have about a thousand elementary school students visit Montezuma Audubon Center. 
But before this past year, we were not giving them opportunities to stay involved in the Audubon work uh, and and network. And so we are still going to do the elementary school programs, but now we have a more concerted effort to reach the older students and the college students and keep them engaged as they go through their, their schooling. So we've had a lot of successes with this program. The uh, over 300 young people from all across the Finger Lakes region have helped us accomplish so much uh, this past year. The participants helped us restore 200 acres of bird habitat, remove 2,000 pounds of the invasive water chestnut plants out of our waterways, and we conducted several community science surveys to document the positive work uh, that's going on across the Montezuma uh, wetlands complex. And, and so we're going to be sending out uh, a, new, a letter here in the coming weeks there's going to be information on our website. We're going to do a lot of this through social media as well over the rest of this calendar year. But we're asking folks to get involved, support Montezuma Audubon Center, uh, help us expand this youth leadership program, bring more youth, more energy into the Audubon flock so we can have a greater impact on birds and the places that they need. And folks can go to montezuma.audubon.org for the uh, uh, donation opportunities. And they can also keep up with us on our social media. So Facebook and, and Instagram are great, great ways to keep in touch. Awesome, awesome. And of course, you can donate year round, right? Through oh yeah, it's not just the end of the year. It's um, th it is throughout the course of the year, uh, but we are having a big push right now because we have a, a vision to expand our youth leadership program, and and time is of the essence. And and so winter is a great time to get a plan for the coming uh, season and get us ready for the very busy spring season when we anticipate uh, dozens and dozens of youth to come out and engage in habitat restoration projects, community science activities. They can even help us lead environmental education programs for the younger students that come to Montezuma Audubon Center.